It would be safe to assume that most people in this room have fond memories of their childhood. Perhaps it was a birthday party with a pony, that special toy at Christmas, or that family trip that brings a smile to your face. Like many children that grow up in high crime communities, I do not have fond memories of my childhood. My earliest recollections were of witnessing brutal murders and seeing the sights and sounds of police crime scenes. Hearing the blood curling screams, the screams that seared into my memory by the age of five. I was born into a double barrel shotgun, if you will. One barrel, a gang entrenched community where violence and survival were one and the same. The other barrel, a family of convicted murderers that eventually killed each other as a result of gang and drug disputes. By the time I was seven years old, your first recital, perhaps, I was smoking marijuana. I now understand that I was self-medicating to cope with the anxieties of post-traumatic stress. Los Angeles is many things to many people. Hollywood, movie stars, Tinseltown, Sun, and it is. However, according to law enforcement experts, Los Angeles is the gang capital of the world. No, it is not Bogota, Colombia, nor is it Somalia, Africa. It is Los Angeles, what is more disturbing is the nature of the gangs that threaten the safety and well-being of our children. You see, the business that finances the gangs isn't drug trafficking. It is human trafficking. More specifically, it is child sex trafficking. My name is Alfred Lomas. I am a survivor of childhood trauma, of gangs and addiction. Today, I am a proud father, a man of deep faith and principles. I am the founder and executive director for Inner City Visions, a nonprofit located in the epicenter of South Central Los Angeles. At ICV, we serve the most vulnerable, at-risk, exploited youth. Girls from the ages of six to 17. These girls live in abusive foster care placements and come from homes that are riddled with addiction and prostitution. In the world of human trafficking, the vast majority of efforts are directed towards rescue and housing. At ICV, we realize that not every child has a chance. Our goal is to provide prevention, intervention, and safe housing. Let me tell you a story about Molly. Molly's mother came to our office. She was referred to us by a neighbor. Molly's mother told us that her daughter was brutally beaten and hospitalized by her drug-dealing pimp boyfriend. Two weeks later, Molly comes to our office. She says she's ready to leave the life. She is still visibly beaten and bruised. What is more disturbing is that during the entire hour of intake, she stared at the floor. Today, Molly is free from drugs. She has her children back from foster care, and she has a steady job. Now, that's only part of the story. You see, 
Molly had a younger sister, Amy. Amy, at 13 years old, was running away from home, doing drugs, not in school, and joining the local gang. We enrolled Amy in our human trafficking prevention program. And today, Amy is a star academic student. She is a youth advocate for our organization. In fact, she has recruited nine girls from the ages of six to 11. And these girls have all the risk factors that would most certainly propel them into a life of sexual slavery. At ICV, we have a 85% success rate. And we have a 90% retention rate for our second year transitional services. What we do is working. And now, human trafficking advocates from all over the world fly to Los Angeles, the gang capital of the world, to learn, to study how to prevent human trafficking. At ICV, we have core values, values that we talk about every day, like compassion. Let me tell you what that word means to me. Compassion means that we reach down and we help someone that could never repay us back. It means that we stand shoulder to shoulder with the voiceless, the powerless children that society calls throwaways. And we say to them, we care. You matter. You deserve a life that's better. Every girl fundamentally deserves a life free from abuse. And through our work, we are able to give them something they deserve. A childhood, a favorite teacher, a bed removed from trauma, a graduation. You see, these are the memories that children need. These are the memories that all children deserve. Thank you.